Whenever you said something clever, it carved a hunger in me for mouths, for matches. Yours is an arcane knowledge, like the architecture of my hands, how the fingers bend backwards, splayed like obedient latex, the lines of life, heart, and fate, of knuckles like scars. God is passed through hands, is shared on the lazy Susan of culture through minds like unexplored continents. Your existence is a vast horizon, the distinct line of which seagulls blur, skimming death like a cursed dream. In the shadows of innumerable rooms, hands move like wings over women's breasts. Your eyes have their own pace and grace. You have supervised grief as it somersaulted in your pupils, heart a beached whale. Water will confess what it has seen, but only if you can understand its ghostly grammar, have the patience for its boundless metaphor. I try to envision you at those two funerals years ago. You are many invisible things. The clarity of your black suit. Eyes survey the casket, hands gasp at the smoothness of wood. You only cry at one, humbled in your anger. There is still the pervasive green of life, like the genius of memory, like the memory of fear. I stare at my words, at the fog they have created, confronting and interrogating their sporadic rainbow. Some have tongues trained to tell the difference between diet, skim, decaf, and regular. Yours has a morse code, the click of thought like the sound of magnets. It licks the earth through the pointed wave, the uninhibited flame. The rain carries the same apocalypse as you, that loose end, the evasive eye of a sewing needle which filters its kin through my fingers, that same life through which I cycled. Thunder cracks upon the roof like an egg in the sink. This is a history I can trace with hands, how you appeared at different points in orbit. Wow. That's an old piece? That was written about five years ago. Super, no idea what, it, what it's about. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. You're a different person. Yeah. Sorry. Come on, you're losing your time. I know. I was supposed to have... You got two minutes. There was one I really wanted to read. Here it goes. Okay. So uh, also about five years ago, I was working in my dad's office. He's an accountant, and I was collating tax returns, which is you know a very diverting job. And I wrote a lot of poems about tax returns, which is kind of weird. So this is called 1040. <laughs> <laughs> this job has nothing to do with glamour, but I get a small thrill out of imagining people's lives from their tax returns. Anonymously, I know their salaries and the net in which a portion is caught by federal, state, and local governments. I imagine their homes, brick, brownstone, pool in the back, large windows, four bathrooms, a cozy one-bedroom apartment with a round kitchen table and a fireplace. I witness the way they are rich and then not rich, drained by the ink on paper. There's a kind of romance in this, married life as documented with a combined dollar amount, one above the other, bound by their duties, their joint returns. I wonder whether these people invented on paper, paper clipped together in the same envelope, are young at heart and still in love, or if their kids have torn them apart and the only thing relating them is the staple in this pound of pages, their yearly history of finance. I always assume they sit down to look at it with their arms enfolding each other, bracing themselves against the dread. 